Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Shall we continue our conference? My name is Andrei Sechin. I work at the company Rockers. I'm a scientific director. I'm going to moderate this panel. I think this is going to be the most interesting part of our conference. And the first presentation in this conference is going to be made by Andreas Gergopoulos, professor from the National Technical University of Athens, who will tell us about the 3D documentation of cultural heritage. Good morning, uh, everybody, and thank you very much for the uh, organizers for this uh, invitation and the opportunity that they give me to uh, present this work. Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, I was saying that we have introduced uh, photomod in uh, our uh, compulsory courses of photogrammetry and also some uh, applied courses. But this uh, project that I will uh, report about, uh, we did not use, uh, unfortunately, photomod. Uh, and I must say that when uh, automatic, uh, in quotation marks, uh, software is photogrammetric software is being used we need to be very 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 careful and we have to know what happens in the background anyway um, we all know uh, what cultural heritage is and uh, what it is about so uh, it's actually our memory and heritage could be tangible or intangible and since it is in danger, as you probably know, it's being destroyed, it's being um, burnt down, um, neglected, or whatever, we need to do a lot of uh, actions to protect it and to give it uh, over to our next generations. So one main action is documentation, and it's uh, dictated by international conventions. And as you can see, uh, we need accurate measurements, we need monitoring, management, preservation and we also need to uh, uh, disseminate information about cultural heritage. Now the protection of cultural heritage uh, is an uh, obligation of uh, mankind of course and there are international organizations to take care of uh, uh, this uh, issue. Uh, mainly UNESCO, as you probably know, and uh, of course there is ICOMOS. ICOMOS stands for International Council of Monuments and Sites and is a UNESCO child, uh, a UNESCO committee. And ICOMOS and ISPRS, who are uh, of course uh, co-organizing or uh, contributing to this event, have formed SIPA. SIPA is the International Scientific Committee for Heritage Documentation. Now, what we have, we have uh, digital technologies, and uh, these technologies are uh, concern instrumentation, as you probably see and you probably know, digital cameras, scanners, satellite navigation systems, 3D printers, etc. From these uh, instruments, we get, we acquire digital data of any kind, and we also have powerful hardware and software to process this data and produce the uh, documentation results. And what is the new thing that these uh, digital, let's say, technologies, these modern technologies have brought to us is automation, dangerous, I uh, said that before. They have brought speed, accuracy improvement, and most importantly, new alternative products. And this is something that uh, uh, my presentation is uh, about today. So when we talk about uh, cultural heritage, we uh, should always think about interdisciplinarity. That is, we have a lot of disciplines, a lot of experts that should contribute to cultural heritage. And you can see there, archeologists, uh, conservators, geomatics engineers, anybody who can contribute is welcome to work in an interdisciplinary team. 
Now, my main presentation is about uh, a project that our university has completed uh, last uh, year, and it's the rehabilitation of the Holy Edicule, that's the Tomb of Christ, in the uh, Church of the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem. And you can see there that uh, we, uh, we were uh, a team of uh, four groups, coordinated by Professor Moropoulou. She, she is a professor in the Chemical Engineering Department. And uh, we had a contribution from the architectural, the School of Architecture, and the School of Civil Engineering, and the School of uh, uh, Land Surveying, like ourselves. Now, for those of you who have never been to Jerusalem to visit this uh, emblematic monument, uh, it's actually the, ho the, the whole church comprises uh, a block of uh, a, a big block in the old town of Jerusalem. And you can see there the two domes. Uh, the uh, bigger dome is covering a cylindrical building on the basis of which is the uh, holy edicule that covers the, uh, what remains from the cave that Christ was, uh, in which Christ was, was buried 2,000 years ago. Um, so the documentation uh, is not something that happened uh, in the recent years. There were uh, many efforts in the past, in the recent past, and you can see that also uh, our university in uh, the 90s and uh, Florence University also in the early uh, 2007 to 2008 uh, did some documentation of the whole church, but not especially of the Edicule. And this is uh, a drawing from, the, uh, from our work in the 90s. And you can see this is a longitudinal section of the whole church. And you can see there on the bottom left of the drawing, the edicule. So you can understand the uh, vastness of the monument and how the edicule is uh, situated within it. So um, this is the, uh, an image of uh, Easter celebrations. You know that uh, there is a very important Easter uh, on Saturday before Easter Sunday, there is a celebration of the uh, Holy Light. And you can see that uh, this is a monument that is the focus of Christianity and of all mankind because there are pilgrims, people who come to uh, pay their dues and visit the, uh, the, the monument, uh, thousands of, of visitors every day. So our involvement uh, was because of some deformations, some severe deformations that occurred in this little building that is approximately uh, eight meters by 10 meters by 12 meters in height. And uh, it was the whole church was closed by the Israeli police for uh, two days because of the danger of uh, uh, somebody getting hurt. And uh, it was Professor Moropoulou and our university that offered uh, their help, our help, to rehabilitate, to reinstate the Holy Edicule in its previous uh, state. So we actually worked from 2015 to 2016, early 2016, presented a proposal to the three religious, main religious communities, and that happened in Athens. In April, 2016, the three communities agreed and gave the uh, green light for the, the works. And in May 2016, uh, a work site was set up and in order to, to do the rehabilitation, and I will explain very briefly of uh, what it consisted. Uh, the main problem was uh, that the flow of the pilgrims should not be stopped. So we set up a site, we changed the flow of the pilgrims and so that uh, there was uh, the pilgrimage as usual. And this meant that when we wanted to work inside the uh, Holy Edicule, we had to do it at night. So we worked from 7, 7.30 in the evening until 6 o'clock in the other day. 
And uh, you can see here the, the flow. And the, the main problem was also that the, the whole work should finish one month before Easter 2017. So actually, uh, fortunately, we, we managed to do it uh, within the deadline and within the budget. So what was actually done was to, um, to do an initial documentation. And then, as you can see, uh, in, uh, after we started the, uh, we, we set up the work site, the marble slabs of around the, the edicule were taken off and uh, taken to a lab to, um, for some processing. The uh, internal masonry was reinstated. That was uh, either with with some uh, titanium uh, uh, grid or with new masonry. And some grouting was also uh, inserted in the masonry in the, in the walls so that they all performed as one uh, body. The marble slabs were put behind. There was a final cleaning and the delivery uh, in March 2017 as agreed one month before the uh, before Easter. So at each of these uh, stages, our lab, our contribution was to document uh, the uh, whole edicule and the, the works, metrically document, okay? So these are some pictures of the deformations, as you can see, and uh, on the left picture, you can see the uh, deviation from the vertical of a, of a, of a column and also in the right picture. And in the left picture, you can also see the steel cage that was put there in 1945 by the British. Because this structure, which was built in 1809, after a, a catastrophic fire, uh, was presenting problems also in the, in the mid-50s. But the main problem, as we found out later, was the rising dump from the uh, uh, from the ground of, of the church. We also performed, our, our uh, lab also performed uh, some very accurate uh, geodetic measurements to establish whether the whole structure has gone off the vertical or not. And the main problem we found was on the uh, steel cage or the steel girder of the British. And you can see that the uh, deviations from the vertical were quite severe, four to nine centimeters. If you consider that it's uh, approximately a six to seven meter high um, columns, that's quite serious. So we started with uh, producing a 3D model of the uh, situation of the holy edicule as it was in May 2015, and in January, of course, May to January uh, 2016. We used image-based modeling that's automated uh, algorithms, photogrammetric algorithms to produce this uh, uh, 3D model. And also we implemented, we um, complemented these, these measurements with some laser scanning in January 2016. So these are some pictures from the uh, scanning process and on the right you can see the uh, outside point cloud, that's the uh, result of, of the uh, scanning and some uh, and the uh, point cloud of the inside of the church, of the uh, monument. I have to say that this little edicule has two chambers, an antechamber, which is called the chamber of the angel, and then the uh, chamber of the tomb, which is a smaller, uh, smaller in, in, in size, and both have domes, okay? And there is an outer dome, which is called the onion dome, uh, which I will refer to a bit later. So this is a little video that uh, shows the uh, situation as we firstly documented, uh, documented it in 2015. And you can see the 3D model and you can also see uh, the uh, dirt and the situation as it was then before any intervention. And you can also see the uh, steel cage of, uh, of the British. 
Um, I will highlight a few interesting points. Uh, our uh, team, I mean, uh, the uh, chemical engineers, they use non-destructive techniques to find out how the masonry, the, the wall inside, is made of. So they did uh, some measurements with GPR, that's a ground penetrating radar or wall penetrating radar in, in this uh, case. And uh, they found out, uh, and, and this is, this is a, a sketch, the big one, is a, is a sketch of their findings. And you can see this orange part is the remnants of the holy rock. That's the cave that uh, the Christ was buried in uh, 33 AD. Um, so we collaborated with uh, the, the chemical engineers. We took their measurements and we produced the 3D of the rock inside the masonry. That was something that actually is not visible, but through these non-destructive detection techniques, we were able to, uh, to reconstruct the, uh, the, the rock. So this is the uh, point cloud, uh, and you can see with orange, with brown, the rock inside the masonry. So th this is a result of the uh, suitable processing of the GPR measurements of our chemical engineers. Now, the flow of the, the work was that the, we produced, from the 3D model that we had, we produced some 2D uh, products, two-dimensional products, and this is our uh, way of working nowadays. We produce a 3D model and then we produce either orthophotos or line drawings, depending on what is needed. And you can see the line drawings on the top left, uh, where every stone, every slab was uh, numbered with a, a code, and it was taken out, taken to a, to a lab, it was scanned, every stone that was taken off the, uh, the monument was, was scanned with a handheld scanner, and uh, it was cleaned and was getting ready to be uh, put back again. Uh, when there was a, a high time, uh, there were some, uh, there was a decision to reset the columns to their vertical position. So that was a, a big uh, project. And uh, actually we uh, did some continuous monitoring of their position through the, through this, uh, through this work. Another interesting uh, point is the uh, rehabilitation of the onion dome. You can see on the left that the dome was full of scaffolding, as was the, the whole structure. And the inside of this, uh, of this dome is made of wood. It's, it's a wooden structure. And uh, the engineer wanted to put a steel uh, base to support this wooden structure. So what we did, we scanned the whole interior. And based on our scan, they designed this base. You see in the uh, middle and the bottom, you see this uh, design, this uh, designed uh, steel base, which was then put exactly in place in the dome. So this was another contribution from, from our side. And uh, a third, maybe uh, another interesting contribution was the uh, position of the cross or the uh, design of the cross that will, was to be put on top of the uh, edicule. So history says that uh, initially when that was constructed in 1809, there was a cross on top of the exterior dome. And uh, during our works, we found uh, a cross left in the masonry by the architect, who was a Greek from Mytilini, Lesbos. And uh, you, you can see that cross on top left. So that was found within the masonry, within the, uh, uh, the walls. And uh, they decided, the uh, three religious communities decided to put a cross resembling that that cross on top of the uh, on top of the uh, monument. So we did. We we used 
inverse photogrammetry, that is, in our 3D model, we've projected it across in different sizes so that they chose which one to, to put before they constructed uh, the cross and put it there. So this is another uh, contribution, I mean, uh, interesting contribution from, from, our, from our side. Of course, the uh, 3D models that we produced during this uh, process were given to the civil engineers and they run uh, finite element uh, software to assess the uh, integrity, the structural integrity of the monument. So the, once they decided to uh, remove the steel cage, so these are some pictures from the removal of the steel cage and this is a, a video, I won't show it all, uh, of the removal of the steel cage, uh, it's actually a time lapse, and the, the, the steel uh, columns were cut with a, a, a device that was using uh, pressed air. So no fire, no electricity, nothing, in order not to uh, uh, damage the uh, rehabilitated monument. And you can see uh, some moments, I mean, these are hours, of, uh, of this work, so I will skip that um, and show you some of the results and then I will show you a, a video of the whole uh, 3D model that we produced after the, uh, <coughs> after the rehabilitation. So these are some specimen of the ortho photos we produced. Uh, actually these are, uh, these are something like 1 to 20, so it's the accuracy is less than a centimeter. And of course the uh, uh, resolution is, is very high. Uh, these are some pictures before and after. You can see on the left, it's the uh, eastern facade before rehabilitation and after the uh, rehabilitation. So it's the, uh, uh, this uh, pair of photographs on the right and some more uh, photo photographs, ortho photos, before and after. So you see there is no uh, steel, steel cage around. And this is the uh, northern part, before and after, and I think I have some more to, uh, to, sh to show you the difference. You see how uh, dirty, how uh, worked out was the, was the monument, and this is how it was in March 2017. And this is the 3D model that we produced initially, and this is the final 3D model with the cross on top. And now I have a video, if I have some time. Is it okay? One minute. One minute, okay, I will run it. So this is a video that shows you the 3D model. Don't forget, it's the 3D model. It's not the real uh, monument. So this is before, okay, I will, run a little bit. And this is after rehabilitation. And uh, I stress it again, this is not the a video that we went around the, the, the monument in the, in the church, but it's a video produced from the 3D model that uh, we produced. And this is the interior, and this is your uh, unique opportunity to watch the interior like that. Because if you visit the, the monument, the edicule now, it's too dark, it's full of candles and uh, uh, lamps, you know. Uh, okay, you understand. And there is no light, of course. And uh, this is how you enter the uh, second chamber of the uh, tomb. And you can admire all the decoration and all the uh, condition as, as it is, um, as it was in March 2017. I hope it's still like that. Uh, one interesting thing is you can see a, a window here on this wall that we open the window to show the holy rock. That's the uh, um, cave that was uh, the, initial, the initial tomb of Christ. Let's go a little bit faster. This 
is the decoration of the uh, chamber of the tomb, which is not visible. It's very difficult to, to see it. I mean, it's impossible to see it. And okay, no. Thank you very much. My only question is that you used laser scanning. My only question is that you used laser scan laser scanning. What was the accuracy inside the Holy Sepulcher Temple? Or was I wrong? It wasn't just laser scanning. Okay, um, we used the faro, a faro laser scanner, and uh, the uh, nominal, its nominal accuracy is two to three millimeters. Uh, we found out that it's not that high, okay? This is for uh, commercial purposes, but it's not more than five millimeters. So uh, it depends also on, on the uh, material of the object. So we had some problems with uh, marble, because marble, as you probably know, absorbs uh, laser. And, uh, but in general, the accuracy was something like five millimeters. Is it enough or for this?